Hello everyone, welcome to the video about the newest update for the original MJ30. In this video I will show you what the newest MJ30 is and how to build it. The original MJ30 was the first ever released MJ pump which was available since 2020. And since then it didn't really receive any major updates, up until now. Today I decided to bring the newest MJET features into the original MJET 30 and release this as a free update for the MJET 30. The way I did this was very simple. I took the pump from the Super Sprint, which is this one, and I redesigned it to make it standalone. Now, to prevent any confusion of this kind, you don't need the MJET 30 to run the Super Sprint, and you don't need the Super Sprint to run the MJET 30. These two are two separate systems, however the pump uh, geometry is the same and therefore the pump also requires most of the same hardware and the same electronics. To date of recording this video, the new MJ30 is compatible with the Ragnarok and also newly with the Valkyrie. Just make sure to download the newest versions of both Valkyrie and Ragnarok to get the parts compatible with the newest MJ30. Because there were many completely understandable questions about the compatibility of the various MJET models, I prepared this compatibility bingo chart which shows the compatibility of the pumps on the left with the hulls on the top. Before you get deeper into this video, if you are considering to build the MJET 30, I recommend that you take a look at the links which I post below the video. There is a manual, there is a part list and there are drawings for the MJ30, which you can access before you purchase the files. The manual also contains some important information about electronics, about print settings, which I won't be going through in this video. So please, if you are looking for more information about the MJ30, take a look at the manual. Let's get started with the build. The first thing you should always do when building any of the newer MJ models is to print the drawings, which will greatly help you with the assembly. We will start the MJ30 build by manufacturing the handmade parts, such as the drive shaft, steering shaft, two mount remount pins, a steering pin, and two brass tubes. We are using one 3mm stainless steel rod, 5mm stainless steel rod, and 3x4mm brass tube. If you print the drawing in real size, you can actually use it to measure the cuts. After cutting the shafts to proper length, we need to file the flat spots on the shafts so that the shafts can transfer torque to the impeller and so on. I like to measure the remaining thickness with a caliper to get the perfect dimension according to the drawing. It's also nice to get rid of the sharp edges using a sandpaper. When working on the flat spot for the motor coupler on the other side of the drive shaft, be very careful to not damage the surface of the shaft where the shaft seal will sit, which is just next to the flat spot. This is the most common cause of any leaks around the drive shaft. The flat spot on the shaft mustn't extend into the shaft seal. Once again, after you get rid of all the sharp edges on the drive shaft, you can repeat the similar process for the steering shaft. I also like to use a drill press to round off all ends of the shafts and rods on all parts. Also make sure that there is nothing inside blocking the brass tubes, because this will be used to connect the water cooling. I am cleaning them with a 3mm bit. It's also important to check that the drive shaft fits the bearings. If your drive shaft happens to not fit the bearings, you will need to take a drill and a really fine sandpaper and sand the shaft down a tiny bit so that the bearings just barely fit. With the handmade parts ready, we have everything to start the assembly. The handmade parts, the printed parts, some hardware, some fasteners and the electronics. You can find the full part list in the description. 
We will start the assembly by preparing the housing and inserting two shaft seals into it. If your seals don't fit, you either need to modify your extrusion factor and calibrate the printer or you can just enlarge the slots a little bit using a knife or a dremel. Next, we will insert 8 threaded inserts into the housing. Two for the motor mount, these go in straight, two to hold the intake grate and four to hold the pump. Next, I will use the drive shaft and the impeller, which will help me to insert the main bearing into the housing. Make sure that the bearing goes correctly into the slot. You can measure this and check this using this part of the drawing. The last step to prepare the MJ30 housing is to glue in these two brass tubes, which will work as water cooling inlet and outlet. I am using epoxy for it. Next, let's assemble the motor mount. Let's start by inserting the two motor mount pins. Next, I will mount the electric motor using a combination of M3x6 and M3x20. The count depends if your motor has 4 or 6 mounting holes. Detailed information about how to select the motor and most importantly how to choose correct KV is in the manual, link in the description. After mounting the motor, also connect the motor coupler. The manual also contains the information about how to select the servo, which I will mount using two M3x10. I will also prepare the servo coupler, which will connect the servo and the steering shaft. First, it is necessary to find two matching holes on the printed servo coupler and on the servo arm. Then drill through these holes in the servo arm using 2mm bit. Don't forget to insert the servo screw into the servo arm. I'm using an M3x6 which will screw into the servo. Then connect the servo arm to the servo coupler using two M2x8. Don't fully tighten these. Leave a 1mm gap to compensate for any misalignment between the servo and the steering shaft. Finish the servo coupler by inserting a threaded insert into it. Let's move on to the assembly of the steering shaft. First, insert the steering pin into the steering crank. And then insert the steering shaft into the steering crank. Pay attention to the correct orientation of the flat spot. And this is the steering shaft finished. Now let's move on to the assembly of the pump. First I will insert the bearing into the pump using once more the impeller on the drive shaft to help. Then I will screw in a 5 by 20 grub screw to hold the nozzle. This screw isn't meant to be removed later. If it doesn't hold there reliably, just with friction, use glue to make sure it stays in place. Finally, we can insert two threaded inserts into the pump, which will hold the right plate. We can mount the right plate using two M3x6 with a flat head. Now is the time to connect all assemblies together and assemble the MJ30. First, connect the servo coupler to the servo. The servo needs to be centered and the screw in the servo coupler must be pointing upwards. Then you can slide in the motor block into the housing and mount it using one M3x40 and one M3x20. Then we can insert the drive shaft and tighten it in the motor coupler. I will also use white lithium grease to grease the main bearing and the shaft seal and close the grease port using M3x6. Then slide in the impeller and make sure it is resting against the main bearing in the bottom. Now rotate the pump and slide it over the impeller. There is no force required, just use the fact that the top stator vane of the first stage of the pump is missing, therefore you can use it as a gap to slide the impeller through it. Then attach the pump using 4 M3x35. Insert the steering shaft and tighten the servo coupler using M3x10. Attach the nozzle and secure it using a washer and an M5 locking nut. Don't tighten the nut. Leave there a little gap so that the nozzle can slide freely. The last part we need to attach is the intake grate. 
the intake grate gets mounted using two M3x6 with a flat head. Now you have successfully finished the MJ30. Now it's time to connect the electronics and test the pump in a pool. The last step to run the MJ30 is obviously to install it into a hull. There is no dedicated video about the MJ30 installation, but there is a video about the installation of the MJ35. The steps required to install the MJ30 are exactly the same as the steps required to install the MJ35. The only thing which is different for the MJ30 compared to the MJ35 are the dimensions you need to follow when doing the cuts in the hull. The correct dimensions for the cuts for the MJ30 to cut into the hull are shown on the last page of the MJ30 drawing. So just follow the MJ35 installation video and use these dimensions instead, and you will be good to go. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions regarding any MJ model, feel free to ask in the comments on YouTube or join the official MJ Facebook group or reach to me out personally on CG Trader. I will link all of these in the description. For now, go and make your boat fly!